Well, I am getting, or actually, I'm in a 100D loaner. It's brand new, and it has oh, 154 miles on it. It's got Autopilot 2.0. Uh, it's got the wood dash trim, that really fake leather. It's actually not too bad. It feels about, uh, about, I'm up here, yes. It feels about what, um, what the textile feels like in my in my 90D. Yeah. It's my first time driving a Autopilot 2.0, or I said kind of be 2.5 now, with the upgraded computer systems that they've done for more redundancy. So I am going to be doing a full review on this car. I, for one, can still say as of December 8th, 2017, Autopilot 2.0 or 2.x is worse yet than Autopilot 1. Um, this thing is doing a very bad, or having a very hard time staying in the lanes. Uh, I haven't actually gotten to drive a 100 kilowatt hour car yet either. But um, acceleration feels the same. Um, and uh, actually we only got 142 miles of charge left. So I guess I'll play around with it on the supercharger a bit. Either way, um, the overall fit, finish, and feel has actually improved yet again. They put some Alcantara down by the door handles here, and um, the headliner. It's uh, quite a bit different headliner than they used to be. Let's see, for starters, I have gotten a 100D, uh, now it's supercharging right now, and we're at 174 miles. Wow. Ah, paid supercharging. <laughs> but zero dollars because it's a Tesla owned car. How about that? At least they're not charging me for supercharging considering my car has unlimited. Now uh, it looks like this car's got the high-powered charger. It's got a 72 amp AC charger in it. Um, we're at 271 rated miles on this car. Now, what, okay, it's 272, and we're still charging at 56 kilowatt hour. Now, my 90D, which is one year old, with 50,000 miles on it, it has a maximum rated charge at 100% 272 and we're already at 273 on the 100d and it's still going and that charge rate is still really darn high. This one also has the built-in center console it's got uh, the nice wood interior I forgot what that's called but let's see some resistance and it's got two cup holders in here now one problem that I saw that's as far as the door goes back Yet there's more storage towards the back there. You just can't reach it. So that was kind of interesting. At least that's two more cup holders. And then over here is where you can charge up your phone. We have the cream interior, beautiful. It actually looks really nice with the black Alcantara. Actually, it's not Alcantara, with the black headliner with the current generation of seats. Let's check out the seats. Now, these have something else that's kind of new. They have what I thought were supposed to be adjustable headrests. Let's see some. Same switch as it's on my car. A little bit different design, newer design. My car has the black Alcantara headliner, but this is not. This is more of a, a textile. Let's see if I can get a better shot from zooming in. This is more of a textile than an Alcantara, which actually, I like this. This would be a lot harder to get screwed up, dirty, a lot easier to clean, a little more durable. So that is somewhat impressive there. Panoramic roof, all glass panel roof. And um, despite being all glass, it's, it's, it's got a real dark tint on it. Very dark tint, and it's 
very reflective as you can see. Hi! But yet, it's still easy to see through. This wood grain interior is just beautiful. Let's see if we can... There, yep. Oh, yeah, here. Now, this car does not have leather. They don't... Tesla doesn't do leather any longer. So it's got uh, this fake leather. So it's got the accented trim on the door and the fake leather itself. And I was a little skeptical. I thought it was going to be like the uh, Model X's and Model S's ultra white interior seats where they were very soft material and what I would say extremely poor quality. But this is actually a very durable material. This feels just pretty much like what's on my uh, textile seats, only instead of being a mix of fabric and the vinyl or whatever this is, the fox leather, it is all the fox leather. And it's, it's actually pretty decent. Uh, the floor mats and color carpeting color is actually really nice too. Um, this is the all cream interior, the cream interior, and it actually looks very nice. This is very impressive, and, and, I, and I do like it. But back to the, the, the trim here. Um, this is still pretty much the same crappy foam material that's been on for about a year and a half now. Two years. Don't like that one bit, like the original. Much, much more durable. If we look inside the handle pocket here, this is, they actually put Alcantara. They have an Alcantara inside the door handle section here. Now these are the current, what, performance seats, next-gen seats. Once again, uh, very, very nice material. They have USB ports in the rear. Finally, this should have been on the cars from day one, four plus 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 years ago. There's more. Hidden are finally two more cup holders. So they have these nice, easily breakable cup holders. You know, if someone, a little kid in the car seat, takes a foot and smacks down on them. But at least we got them in... Looks like it hold a big gulp. Once again, I'm really, really loving this cream interior. It's kind of weird. This is a little bit different design of the, uh, of the seats than are what in my car. The bracket's holding them down. Looking at the trim, the trim's looking pretty good here, pretty good, and then traditional Tesla fail on the weather stripping, having the same problems. That's popping off. Actually, all this is popping off in my car. Some of the wife's shopping spoils. She's now a personal shopper. I uh, got the UMC in there. Uh, this one's got some sort of advanced sound or the upgraded sound. It's got the subwoofer. Still a nice big spot in the back. Someone did a very poor job at the polishing of this car. Swirl marks galore on a brand new vehicle. Now, one thing I will say right off the bat that's different than my car is mine has a rubberized panel that's on the top of the hood here. So anything that might be bouncing around inside the frunk does not hit it and cause excessive noise. Got the molded plastic panels here. The frunk is definitely a lot smaller than even my 90D. And I'd say one third the size of a original 2013 or 2014 non-dual motor Model S. Got some interesting intake here. It's a lot bigger than the small little intake on mine. And they got the uh, license plate bracket and the tow eye hook and the emergency release. Oh, this is car number 216,753. Cool. Uh, this one's got autopilot 2.0. So it's got all the extra cameras, three up there. Test the side markers here. The pillars, the pillars there. As of December 8th, 2017, over a year after Autopilot 2 has been introduced, Autopilot 2 
is still nowhere near as reliable or as capable as Autopilot 1. I have driven between Milwaukee and Highland Park plenty of times, the roads, blah, 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 and this car couldn't maintain a lane if its life depended on it. The only way it can maintain a good lane was if I was following behind another vehicle for it to also lock on to. It does not hook in, so that's kind of broken. The plastic looks a little overly melted. Buyer's Guide. What did this baby cost? Technicals, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, upgrade price, okay, base. 97,500 for the Model S100D. Enhanced autopilot, five grand. Glass roof included, wow. Cream interior, 3,300, holy crap. 19 inch slipstreams, thousand, no, included. Midnight silver metallic paint, thousand bucks. Premium interior lighting, included. Figured ash wood decor, included. Ultra high fidelity sound package included. Premium interior and lighting, five grand. Smart air suspension, high amperage charger upgrade, and sub zero weather package included. I think those are all part of the premium interior. Um, there's a lot of not rated for the safety ratings. There we go. Baby's got bass, so we're gonna turn that down there. Yep, it passed. Music test. This one has the uh, the new LED headlights, so low beam and high beam, high beam, low beam, high beam, low beam. Uh, while the light is nice, crisp, and focused, the range and distance that they display is uh comes up quite a bit shorter than the xeons in um in my uh my 90d so i got adaptive headlights turned on i don't see it moving or much of anything happening that is the 100d loaner i have right now